Well, we asked and they listened. And with our new firmware update for the a7 III, we've got our intervalometer, our time-lapse mode, and this is just another tool that's going to allow us to be more creative with our shots in camera easily, so I've made you a quick guide to break down and show you the features and how to use this thing. Let's get going! So here we are in our long overdue and muchly appreciated Sony a7 III intervalometer mode. You can find it in section 4 of 14 in the first tab, so if we jump in there, it's nice and basic and easy, and what you want to do is, when you want to turn it on and use it, you want to just click on interval shooting and set it to on. And that means the next time you press the shutter down, it's going to trigger your settings here. So we've got a shooting start time, and this is going to allow us to get set up so there's no camera shake, and we can set that into any interval that we want to be able to tell the camera when it's going to start shooting. And next we've got our shooting interval. And this is how long in between each shot the camera is going to wait. Next is the number of shots it's going to take and it's nice that it shows you right on there how long it's actually going to take for this whole thing to happen based on your settings. And next we have the handy AE tracking sensitivity, which is going to let the camera automatically adjust for changing exposures during your time lapse. And on page two, we've also got the option to shoot silently if needed, as well as something called shoot interval priority, which unless you're shooting in either program or aperture priority, you're not going to have to worry about, but here's what it does anyways. And that's pretty much it. Not a heck of a lot to it. So when you're ready and you have your settings programmed, just hit the shutter button and you'll see a screen pop up showing you when it's going to start. And naturally, I had to test this thing out, so off I went. So there are a few things to know about this intervalometer in the camera. And one is that you're going to need some kind of post-production to put it all together. It doesn't actually make it into a video file unless you use the S&Q setting set to one frame. Shooting in manual is going to give you full control of your camera and ultimately the look and feel of your time lapses. And it's always best to shoot in manual focus so your camera's not hunting and changing the focal point of your time lapse. Now, I'm not going to break down all the settings for time lapses in this video, but if you are interested in seeing the best settings and how to make an awesome time lapse on any camera, check out my other video on it. So by the time I got to where I was going, it had actually clouded over and I was struggling to find something interesting that day. So here's a time lapse of me taking the time lapse. And it's awesome if you can find somebody to go with a lot of the time because you can be there for a while. Anyways, here's a couple examples from what I did that day. So now you know how to use it, but I'm going to show you how to put it all together in post. And there's lots of ways to do it, but I like to do it in Premiere Pro. I'll show you a quick and easy way. Check it out. Okay, so we're here in Premiere, and the first thing that you're going to want to do before you import your pictures is go up to Edit, down to Preferences, and then Timeline. From here you're going to make sure that your still image duration is set to one frame. Then click OK. Next, go ahead and find the folder with all the pictures that you want to import. So to make this go as smoothly as possible, you want to make sure that your pictures are numbered simply in series. And if that's the case, like here, just click on the first picture, and then select Image Sequence, and press Open. 
and Premiere is going to actually make that into a video file for you of your whole time lapse. Then you can just drag it onto your timeline, make adjustments, and you're done. Now if you've realized that your pictures are not in sequence, or they're kind of a funny file name, Premiere's not going to recognize this as an image sequence, and what it's going to do is actually import every single file individually. But that's still okay. You'll know this because it's only going to import one file. So what you're going to do instead is select the first and the last, bringing all the files in individually, and then drag them over to your timeline. Now highlight all the pictures in your series, right click, go to nest, which you can name if you'd like, and hit enter. And this is going to combine all of those files into one clip that you can easily move and edit. And that's all there is to it. Well that's it guys, you're now a master of your A7 III intervalometer. I really hope to help and if it did, consider hitting that like and subscribe button and drop your questions in the comments down below. If you find that your camera doesn't have this feature, make sure you've already updated the firmware to version 3.0 and I will leave a link in the description as well for that. Like always, make mistakes, be yourself, get out there and take some more pictures. See ya!